welcome back to the Music Nest Art Podcast. It's your ever so endearing host, Louis Love. And today we have a very, very special episode as we welcome to the show Shadra, the Shaman Dragon. Shadra has been a recurring guest performer on the Music Nest, having performed with Tony from DC Says on episode three and frequently returning as a guest MC with different artists. Now, I'm very excited about this episode because I'm actually quite a big fanboy of Shadra's work as a rapper, writer, composer, producer, painter, mystic, illuminary, and visionary, if I may be so bold to say so. Yes, folks, it's the real deal. I have to say I was struck awoke on first encountering Shadra's music as I'd never heard such music, which brought together many of my favorite subject topics such as Jungian mysticism, consciousness, ethereal realms, spirit animals, ET aliens, metaphysics, and most importantly, the universal cosmic energy force known as love. Combined with an infectious wide array of hip hop beats, deep sub 808 trap bass, he brings the lost ancient esoteric knowledge back to the forefront of modern music to remind all of us of our shared humanity as we roll onto the postmodern era into the new age. A very much needed reminder, I feel, as the world becomes ever so complex with different lifestyles, culture, thinking and beliefs multiplying at an accelerated rate. Something we will dive into later, I'm sure. So from his own lyrics, I quote, he's got a disposition to the mystic side of physics. So it is with great honor and respect to welcome Shadra to the show. Not only is he a great artist, but I'm happy to say he is a dear friend of mine. He's got a lot of wisdom and insights to share about this life. So enough of me talking. Uh, welcome to the Music Nest Art Podcast, Shadra. Uh, how are you feeling today? Yeah, feeling great. Feeling great. Thank you for having me. Greetings, Earthlings, all over the, all over the globe. And, and thank you, Louis, for that very beautiful and touching introduction. I'm, I'm honored to be here. Ah, my pleasure, my pleasure, really. It's, uh, it's great to have you on. Um, so maybe you could start off and briefly tell us a bit about your background and how you got started with music in your early days. And uh, I know you're a mix like me. You're half US and half Taiwanese, is that right? Uh, Chinese, Taiwanese, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm mostly from Texas. Uh, I mostly grew up there and went to college there. And uh, before I was more into the graphic arts, the visual arts, drawing, painting, and comic books, sometimes writing. Um, and then I kind of got, I don't know, um, kind of bored with that. So then... Uh, I wanted to do music and yeah, I've always been very much like a, a diehard hip hop fan and just music in general. Mm. And yeah, uh, I was, I was good friends with somebody that rapped uh, when I lived in DC and just by hanging out with this person a lot, um, I just picked up the ability. And from there I made a conscious decision to just start doing music Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, my various, uh, life experiences, uh, I just kind of started translating that into rap lyrics basically. Mm. So, okay. That sounds great. Yeah. So let's talk a bit about your music and the subject content, which is, uh, is what uh, interests me a great deal. Um, I just prepared some quotes here from Lim listening to your music recently. So, um, I'll, I'll just uh, mention a few of those and maybe it'll uh, uh, inspire some, some story that you have in mind that you could use that inspired one of your songs. So here, here's nice. some quotes from your lyrics. Um, Awakening, third eye vision, elevate consciousness, humanity be real, mystic eyes of physics, totem animals that led you to the spiritual, ethereal realms, had a few alien encounters, take it to a higher being, out of body, I'm not dreaming, beaming it to another frequency. I'm all about that energy, synchronistic, unify. 
cannot let the world know that change is here and time has come. Realize we're all immortal and we're, we've been here all before. There ain't such thing as time once you expand the mind. Realize everyone is one. Everything is unified, electrified. Wise up, rise up. Time to take the skies up. Time to wake these lies up, the immortal. Now for me, like those lyrics are just quite profound. So um, yeah, I really nice. would learn, uh, would love to learn how, how you, you know, how these words and phrases came into your consciousness or how, you know, what inspired this kind of writings. Because it's, it's not your usual R&B rap artist stuff that you would hear uh, from right, MTV right. or whatnot. So uh, yeah, what's the background? How did you find yourself writing on this subject matters? Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. So since I, I was like 18 years old, I've had a series of spiritual experiences um, that that kind of happened to me. And mm. yeah, I, I, I feel, uh, you know, modern society is lacking this kind of like spiritual understanding, spiritual appreciation. Um, I feel like the modern society is more focused on the material, on the practical, on the mundane, uh, which is also important. But then you, you need you need both sides, mm. right? So, uh, so I, I find that you know music and especially rap, you know, because rap you can fill it with lyrics and words, and you can really go in depth on a subject was a great medium to mm. transfer and share this information, which um, one of the main points of which is that there is this higher intangible spiritual dimension of reality that, you know, we don't talk about on, in schools. We don't, you don't see it talked about very much uh, in mainstream media. Mm. And yeah, I mean, um, music, kind of has, it's always been a tool of say like profits, for example, uh, to mm. share spiritual information. Um, and a lot of them did it because it, they use the music, they, they, they hid the spiritual information in the music because a lot of times talking about certain subjects was like against the law, mm, right? right? Or mm. Yeah, the so, Christian church and whatnot would be controlling what you can and can't say regarding the, I guess, the more uh, mystic, yeah. mystic side of things, right? So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and yeah, th like, yeah, there's, yeah. and all over the world, this is, is a theme that you'll see, there, there is this kind of uh, balance of truth and, and power. So, um, Mm. Yeah, and, and then I, I also do this because uh, I, I just, I feel inspired to do it. And I love music and mu music is a meditation for me also. Mm. Um, and, you know, the things I talk about in my raps, it's, it's also kind of messages for myself to remind my own self of these truths that exist, which I feel uh, gives a certain level, level of comfort. Yes, yes. Well, you know? I, I would personally resonate with that as well because um, it, it not only is it good for for you for yourself to remind. Uh, thank you for sharing with the rest of the world. I, I, I find it very useful as well. I especially My like pleasure. this this line: "Realize we're all immortal, and we've been here all before." Now, the first time I heard that, I thought that was just so great and profound, and it had a feeling of truth uh, to it. So. I'd be curious to to know, you know, this line. Like, is are you able to kind of recount an experience where you had this realization? Because it's realizing we're all immortal. I think most mortals would consider when we're dead, we're dead, and that's it. You know, so this right. is quite a this is a great line. Right. Uh, well, okay. Yeah. So th there was a moment um, where I was actually doing art. And, and I was getting very much um, into like the zone, into the flow state. And 
I, I just had this realization. I just, I just had this feeling in that moment. I mean, I, I've had this many times with, and it's something you'll see often with people when they have spiritual experiences. They talk about how there's this sense that um, time is an illusion, or that there's another dimension that's beyond time that's that's infinite, right? Mm. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I just had this kind of uh, epiphany that. Yeah, it's just this uh, intuition that like mm -hmm. everything that we're experiencing, you know, even like all of our relationships, all of our struggles, it's just all part of this never ending story, which we experience again and again, but it's ultimately this same eternal, like the same eternal uh, myth, the same eternal story that's mm. we've kind of been experiencing forever. Kind of like we've just been like uh, watching this movie of reality and the clothes may change, the language may change, uh, but there's these certain eternal themes, mm. you know? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, very interesting. You, you know, like, um, you, know, for, you know, for example, like every, in, in a sense, every man and woman you know, is Adam and Eve kind of, you know, still, um, I don't know, in the Garden of Eden or, you yes. know, like we're, we're, we're all Adam and Eve, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's a metaphor, you know, and yeah, to taste the forbidden fruit and the, the Congress of coming together is kind of, yeah, it's, it's and right. to create another life form. Yeah, there's many different levels to look at it, I guess, depending on the framework of your own traditions and beliefs, you know, and I guess from a Buddhist point of view, which would be something I kind of resonate more with, um, uh, the, the kind of Congress or the, the, the culmination of two beings coming together and then creating another child and manifesting another being into this life. And I suppose from the Buddhist point of view, it would be the cycle of birth and death or the life cycle of suffering. It's, you've actually tasted the fruit of coming together and then um, procreating another being into this, into this path or this, um, this life. Um, right, right, exactly. Yeah, okay. Um, so recently you released a, your debut album, Lucidity Manual. Uh, of course, uh, this album is a little different than most. It's a concept album. Um, could you tell us a bit about this uh, art concept? Uh, it's based around a character, right? Uh, Lucius Dark? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's about... Uh, it's, it's, it's an avatar I created that comes from... that comes from a, a higher dimension and that has essentially come to Earth just to help raise the love vibration of consciousness um and amazing yeah yeah and to kind of yeah help remind people that there is you know there is something called spirit there there is there does exist this higher benevolent force that's looking out for us uh even when things maybe are not going our way and even when life here may seem chaotic and just random and lawless that actually you know, beyond that, there is this higher uh, law of love of the universe. Mm. Mm. So yeah, so then, so I'm basically in my spaceship uh, for this album and I'm just like transmitting my songs to earth. Mm. So yeah. Amazing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah a cheers. really great album and uh, yeah, very, uh, very unique with, with the subject content. Thank yeah. you, thank you. Yeah, worked worked hard on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, that yeah. kind of ties into, like, I see on your website shamandragon.com, you write uh, the goal uh, is to elevate consciousness through art, music, and film. You kind of touched on it briefly, but um, like, why is this important? Do you feel, and why now? Like, uh, like, what's um, 
you know, what is the moving factor that makes you deem this so important to, to spend all your energy in it and um, to, to share it with other people? Okay. So, in, in, okay, so okay, these things we're talking about, they, they can be very difficult to talk about because they are the most abstract concepts Right. Mm, sure. Um, We're talking about consciousness. It's it's still yet to be understood fully in uh, science right. and what most people are, what's most most people's languages accustomed to. So yeah. Right. Right. I mean, like, yeah, we talk about an apple. You know what an apple is. You know those kind of apples. But you talk about consciousness. This this can mean different things to different people. And the way I see it is, uh, consciousness and spirit are. There, there are two ways of kind of describing the same thing with slightly different attributes. But it's it's pretty mm. much, in, in my viewpoint, the same thing. Just the, And these are just words, again, describing these abstract ideas, which, you know, we cannot exactly prove, um, mm. right? But through all of my experiences, uh, there's certain things, there's certain themes that have been shown to me that are very important. And one of which is this idea that consciousness affects reality. Mm. And, and I've, I've, I've had experiences, I've had weird experiences where I've seen things happen in real time. Um, a lot of people, you know, kind of talk bad against the idea of the secret. But th I mean, this is kind of what the secret is about. Uh, I do appreciate the secret, I think, it it leaves out a lot of important details um, mm. about how your consciousness affects reality, mm. but uh, but this idea of consciousness affecting reality is not something that everyone is aware of or they they believe it or a lot mm. of people they're they're not even like this this kind of thought does you know they may see this as quote unquote magical thinking, mm. yeah. Right? I understand. Yeah. So. Yeah. But so an example, uh, um, if I can just interject okay. there, um, you say consciousness affects reality. So how do you feel about like um, certain subject content, like uh, in music and in art and film, that might have a lot of violence, or you know, that might have a lot of dark aspects. Um, do you think, you know, is it harmful to consume such kind of violent and gory films or, you know, some uh, kind of maybe some sexist uh, music lyrics? Do you think this is can be, uh, like, would that be kind of a, a way that can affect consciousness and the reality of things? Yes, yes, uh, I, I believe so. Um, and the way it works is, okay, so... Consciousness affects reality, and everything that we take into our consciousness affects us, um, often in ways that we are not aware of. Mm. And so the, the things that you focus on, it kind of like becomes part of you. Mm. And then through your conscious mind, your subconscious mind, your thoughts, your emotions, it creates a reality inside you and through you, this reality may become manifest. Mm. And especially if you have a large group of people that are all focusing on the same kind of thoughts, the same images, the same ideas, the same words, could mm. have a bigger effect, mm. right? So then it comes down to uh, people taking responsibility for their own consciousness, what they consume, because like when you watch a movie, you know it's not real, but to your subconscious, it's 100% real, mm. right? Your subconscious knows no difference between a fake emotion and a real emotion, mm. right? So like when you're watching a movie and you cry, okay, so you're crying based on an illusion, but your subconscious just knows that it's sad. Mm. Right. Right? So I believe that there, there is a momentum with this, mm. right? So I wanna create a positive momentum of, 
of love, of compassion, of forgiveness, of understanding, of rationality and logic. Mm, uh, that right. that helps to create a better reality for all of us on Earth. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and this kind of ties into the the whole collective consciousness as well, right? Because if you're consuming maybe darker aspects, then your own consciousness is kind of contributing to the collective um, consciousness that manifests a reality that affects all of us. So, you know, right. taking res- responsibility for what you consume consciously. Um, is something to be aware of, right? Because you, you never know. You, you know, you might not be wishing for it, but if you're making that a, uh, a an aspect of your consciousness, then it could possibly contribute to the manifestation of it in some way, or at least. Right. Right. So you know, for example, um, if. If you make a very large group of people angry at you for whatever reason, um, there there could actually be some real world effects. Mm. Um, and and I believe this because I I have seen things. I've seen very strange things happen, which I, I can only attribute, like they they happen to consciousness. Um. Mm. So by that same token, uh, if you get a large group of people sending out a lot of love energy, I think this could be very healing, like for everyone. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what one part of the your track uh, "Peace Up" uh, I found very um, a very positive influx of energy uh, in this song. Uh, you know, you're the piece up is very much on a positive vibration level and uh, quite a good song. So nice. Yeah. Uh, there's one line in there. I, I, I quite like that song. Um, I have one line I really like. It's a, uh, it's from Hammurabi, I think Hammurabi, like, which is, uh, you know, his law was an eye for an eye. Mm-hmm. Right, which is like if someone does something to you, you have the right to do like the exact same thing to them. Mm. Um, but then there's the quote, which which I put in the song, which is a, an eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. Uh, which somebody else said, I can't remember who it is right now. Mm. But mm. Uh, I, yeah, I think kind of a lot of people have this mentality and don't realize it. Which is why, uh, you know, the forgiveness and compassion is very important. Too right. Too right. And here is a little excerpt of the track, Peace Up. No peace for sale, no peace on leases, it is sea. In the EYEP, sit together, see peace is free. Grown on trees, blown on leaves, get rid of disease, cause they not at ease. He's up, breeze up and breathe, peace up my mind. To the world is free, peace up myself, peace they can't see. Peace up, eternally, peace up. For the galaxy, peace up, throughout infinity, peace up, oh let the be, we let it be, peace up, eternally, peace up, for the galaxy, peace up, throughout infinity, peace up, oh let the be, we let it be. And now let's return back to the interview. All right. Yeah. Well, w- with all that said, um, I know we're in a very special time. Um, so, like, h- how do you feel about the current climate, like in 2021 and the state of the world? Like, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> do you think everything is good, or are we in a crisis, or everything is going to plan, and that the COVID pandemic is part of a divine plan? Right. Or do you think we're on the cusp of a, an extension, extinction event or something? Excuse me. <coughs> right. um, <coughs> like, could you provide yeah, the, some the, the, illumination on this? Like, uh, or do we have, I guess we have a lot of work to do as a collective living organism, right? Right. Yeah, I had one inter- interesting thought about COVID the other day. Um, it's funny how the most dangerous thing in the entire world that's affecting everything is the smallest thing, a mm. disease. Yeah, and it's invisible. 
right? <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, okay, well, I know a lot of people out there are quite worried because there is a lot of tension. Mm. And I believe that humanity is meant to evolve. It's meant to awaken. I mean, if not awaken to some kind of like ultimate enlightenment, at least awaken to a higher level than what it is now. And I, I think humanity right now, it's like everything that is happening, it's like we are kind of, you know, we've received a lot of information with the age of the internet, with the technology, and like with the, you know, the communication technology, right? We're able to share information. We're able to communicate with each other on a level like never before. So the collective is taking this information, sifting through it, kind of looking for what's worth keeping and what's worth leaving behind. Mm. It's an interesting way to put things, yeah. Right, yeah. so yeah, we're kind of like, we we I do feel we are at this point of change. Um but yeah, it's it's like it's it's just humanity working itself out and that we we're meant to face all of these obstacles, grow stronger from it, grow wiser from it, learn from it, and become mm. better. Mm. Well like, here, here, yeah. yeah, that sounds very positive. Uh, I, I heard one guy describe it as um, the rainbow virus. <laughs> it was quite funny. I, I, I had asked the rainbow virus how? And he's like, oh, it's the virus. It's going to fix everything. So I, I quite liked that, right. actually. <laughs> you know, sometimes we have to kind of let something bring out all the, um, the ugly and all the problems. And then it's, now that it's on the surface, now we can try and fix it. Where before it might have been sleeping in the subconscious or kind of in the dark alleys and we weren't aware of it. But now it's all coming out in the open and we have, we have to kind of face it together. Exactly. Exactly. Like, uh, you know, the, the good and bad, th like bad can come from good and good can also come from bad and, and good often does come from bad. Mm. Right. Uh, it's, it's like the chicken and, and the egg. Um, mm. The egg is there to, I mean, if the chick, if the chicken doesn't break out of the egg, it becomes a death trap. At the same time, you cannot assist the chicken in breaking out of the egg. Otherwise, it will not grow the muscles it needs to survive and become strong. Mm. Right? So yeah. the, the challenges are there to teach us and help us grow, basically. Yeah. yeah. You know, and yeah, like, like your friend said, it, it is showing a lot of the cracks because let's face it, modern day society is far from perfect and it, it has a lot of problems, especially with regards to how we treat the environment. Right. right? Mm, of course, yeah. It's, it's, it's almost we've lost this, uh, this connection with Mother Earth, uh, especially from the corporate level of business and all, all these guys profiteering off the exploitation of the planet. Yes. Oh. Right. Right. I mean, we, we can't just have endless growth and, <laughs> you know, create endless products and, and then create endless pollution and then not even talk about the pollution, you know? Mm. Mm. So, but yeah, we're, we're meant to face it, meant to overcome it. So. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So let me ask you this. Um, based on what you just said there, um, it seems like you're fully um, positive that uh, us as a collective species, um, like we can achieve uh, a liberation and we can uh, achieve peace and harmony and get into a full love vibration uh, collectively on this planet, um, right, in this epoch. Like, how would you say uh, what uh, each of us can do? Like, what's the most important thing each of us could do to try and contribute to this, to this kind of goal, you know, of 
because you know it's human nature. We all want peace, harmony, and love. You know, it's, uh, I don't think there's many of us who don't, unless they're psychopathic, I suppose. So right, right. Like, how can we, on a, on an individual level, what would you what would you say uh, people could do actively, like to to try and manifest that? Okay. Um, okay. Yes. Uh, I I do believe this is possible, and I also believe. Like really now is the time because with the information technology, uh, the, the humans of earth are more connected than ever before, which means our collective thoughts and actions um, become more powerful than ever before. Um, so it, it is vital that we elevate consciousness, right? So um, on the individual level, Mm. Okay, so a, a lot of what consciousness is about is your thoughts and feelings. And we want to, you know, you want to feel as much peace and love as you can, as often as you can, as much gratitude as you can. Mm. Right? So there's exercises you can do to do this, um, there's meditation. There's art, which is a kind of exercise. Mm. Um, dance. There's pre- yes, dance, um, expressing. Mm. Right? Uh, this is, yeah, this is a very, like, kind of, it's very, like, a lot I can say about this. Mm. Um, right, yeah. You know, so, but it's, for a lot of people, you know, they may think they're on their love, the love vibration, and they are, but they may not realize that they there can be a deeper love that you can get into. Mm. You know, um, you know, one exercise I like to do is at least once a day, you know, I will do a kind of love meditation where I will go through and I will think about some of my most beautiful experiences and I will feel that and I will feel the gratitude and the humbleness of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll go through and I'll think about all the people that I care deeply about. And I'll think about like the kindness that they've shared, shared with me. Um, and I'll, I'll send them loving energy. I will go through and think about people that get on my nerves mm-hmm. and I will try to, I will see them as just like me, just another child of earth that's trying to find his way. And I will, you know, send them positive intentions and positive energy. Mm. Okay. Right? So, but, you know, there is also the dark side. Mm-hmm. And another part of... Uh, there's a, yeah. Uh, okay. So... So for a lot of people, they, they may not be able to get in that love vibration so easily because they are held back by having too deep of a shadow. So they need to, all of us on some level need to do shadow work, shadow healing. Mm. Right? right. And, if, and if you don't do your shadow healing, that often means that you project your shadows on others and then you go around demonizing other people, making it hard for you to have compassion for them, mm. right? So to heal the shadow, art is a great way to do this. Um, you know, writing, you know, writing down all of the things that you're suppressing, all of your negative thoughts and feelings, writing it down and looking at it, trying to understand where it comes from. Mm. Um, and a lot of getting into this love vibration, I mean, it, it, it all starts with the self-love. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, right? And, you know, a lot of people, it's hard for them to love themselves because they carry uh, this heavy shadow. Mm. So, yeah, this this is a, like, a, it's a very, very deep topic, but. Yeah, shadow work is, yeah, we might not have the, the capacity to go through all of that here, but I, I, that was pretty clear uh, briefly. Yeah, okay. Nice. So you, you kind of touched upon 
art and music, you know, as a, as a way to to work through the shadow. So you find this to be a very important tool for for the improvement of the human condition. Yeah, yeah, like art, you know, dance, writing, music. This is a way to exercise your demons. <clears throat> Because like when we have these negative emotions, these angry emotions, <clears throat> or even emotions of like overt, just unbalanced sexual desire, um, a lot of times like we might want to, we, we feel like we should repress these because they're not accepted by society. Um, and art is a way you can express these and let these come out and also look at them and trying to understand where these feelings are coming from. Mm -hmm. You know, so, cause a lot of times all of these negative things, we, we have this shadow because of these negative experiences that we've been through life that, you know, they may have happened several times and they kind of start to create this negative worldview, but it's not reality. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Um, so let's just switch it well, up. Okay, but one more yeah. thing. One more thing I should yeah. say. Um, art is one of the is the main one of the main ways that I healed myself. Okay. Mm. So, right. So um, okay. I mm. walk I walk the path of a shaman and a shaman is essentially a person that has been through some intense psychological trauma that kind of <laughs> completely destroys their sense of self destroys it it, it destroys their their inner self mm -hmm. uh kind of don't know how to put it but something like that um and so the shaman in healing themselves and learning to heal themselves, they are, they become stronger and they are then better able uh, to help others with their healing. Mm. So I I have been forced not forced I had I had to for my own, my own like health and sanity um, to heal myself. Right, and one way I did that was through long hours of drawing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you know, like Amazing. when I was, uh, yeah, like like when I was younger, like I I wanted to be an artist. My father didn't want me to because he felt it was extremely impractical. But um, as I would draw for long hours and I would get into flow state, I could literally feel my subconscious healing um, because I at that time I had all this chaos. And noise and my and negativity in my subconscious, and I became obsessed with drawing because it, it was like the only thing that made me feel better. Mm. And and it became my meditation. It's, it's meditation, right? Um, so after like years and years of like drawing every day for like long hours, um, it it changed me. It healed me. It helped me quiet my mind. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, art, art is healing. Yeah. Well, it seems very important. Definitely resonates with me as well. Art and music has been pretty much saved my life as well. So, yeah. Right. I'm sure a lot right. of the listeners would resonate with that as well. Okay. So um, let's just switch it up here. Uh, I know you're quite uh, into the comics, so... What is this fascination with comics? Like, uh, what, what does it mean to you? And, you know, what is it that we can learn from comics? Like, I, for most people, they probably think it's just for kids. So maybe you could just uh, give us a, a, an alternative view on the, the whole comic world. Okay, comics essentially are modern-day mythology. Okay. And, yes, and mythology is kind of the instruction guide to how to be human, mm. right? So like the myths, 
the whole point of the myth was to teach a moral lesson of right or wrong, how to behave, how to be a good person. And the comic books are the modern day equivalent of that. Mm. Right. And that's, that's what superheroes represent. Like, you know, what, what makes one a superhero is not the superpowers. It is a higher sense of morality that gives them the wisdom to use these powers wisely. Mm. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, so, and, and, the, and the superheroes, they still follow the same mythological themes as the ancient myths, right? Right, because I was going to talk about how some comic book uh, superheroes occupy like a certain archetype. Uh, exactly. What, what the, the uh, young would talk about and, you know, certain archetypes of um, certain traits in, in the psyche. Um, yeah, exactly. Like, like Superman is, you know, and, and every culture around the earth has always more or less had a solar deity. Mm, right? Solar deity. Like, like uh, Horus or Apollo or... Uh, even Jesus, aka Yeshua. Um, mm. I mean, he's the he's the son of God, but he's also he's like literally like the sun. He is the light. He is the way. He represents light. He represents the sun. Mm. And that you know, Superman also. I mean, he gets his powers directly from the sun, mm. right? And you know, he's there to inspire you to greater greater actions. Uh, so he kind of like helps people to see the light. And, you know, Superman, he also, I mean, one of his main powers is sight, mm. right? He's got, he's got, he's got x-ray vision. He can see through things. Um, energy literally comes out of his eyes. Like he can shoot these energy bolts from his eyes. Mm. So, and, and then the flip side of that, you have Batman and Batman, you know, he also serves the light in that, he is your guide through the darkness. Mm. So he's kind of more helping those people that are lost in the darkness find their way. Whereas Superman is, you know, he's giving you the light of inspiration. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. And yeah, the comics as a, as a modern day form of uh, mysticism is, is quite interesting or mythology. So how yeah. would you say like comics have been quite uh, an inspiration source for, for your music and your writing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Who would be I, some I, of your favorite writers in, in the comic world era that kind of helped, helped you carve out some of your songwriting? I mean, the, the beauty of comic books is that they actually had a lot of creative freedom to create the kind of stories that they wanted. So a lot of the stories, they're really not for kids and they really deal with some very deep and sometimes even mystical concepts like my favorite authors, um, such as Grant Morrison. Mm. Uh, a, a lot of the Superman movie stuff is from him. And uh, Alan Moore. Mm, right. Um, yeah, who did Watchmen. Oh, okay. Yeah, I love that film. Um, but yeah, also uh, V for Vendetta. Ah, okay. You know, and and Graham Morrison and Alan Moore, they're both self-proclaimed magicians, mm. you know. Um, and it's funny because, you know, uh, most people don't know who they are, but they have had their fingers on some of the most powerful cultural thing, like, movements that you know people are not even aware of you know like uh you know v for vendetta that's where we get the the anonymous masks right the mm. guy fox masks right yeah and that's so present now that's really uh synonymous with a certain i, I guess mind or movement and privacy i suppose and i guess quite anti-establishment as well those guy fox masks uh, right yes yes mm. interesting yeah okay that's, uh, that's an insight all right, well, we're almost coming to the end here. I just have a couple of more questions for you, Shadra. Um, 
Right. Like I, your whole theme is all about awakening people and you know elevating their consciousness, consciousness work, which I think is going to be more and more coming into the the main geo dialogue. You know, it's uh, I think to solve all of these problems that we have across the world, um, one way to find the solution will be raising our consciousness and elevating it to to higher levels. So you touched on some. Uh, methods of how to do that. Um, uh, would you have any more techniques? You know how how people can awaken themselves to uh, to raise their consciousness and elevate it. Okay. Well, yeah. In general, the the kind of activities I recommend the most are, you know, reading, writing, meditating. Um, like, and how would you, know, you feel about, um, you know, uh, certain psychotropic plant medicines? Would they be effective for the... Yeah, Th- those are very effective and, you know, they can also be dangerous. So you want to be careful mm. and... You know, you want to do it in the right environment um, with people that you can really trust, you know. Sure. Um, you know, like like for me, really, like what makes like you spiritual, like for me, spirit is love, you know. And for me, that also means seeing that we are all one, we are all connected, we are all one just giant family. Right. Right. So for me to be awake is to truly realize this and to be as loving as you can. And when I say loving, I don't mean that, you know, you go around just giving strangers a hug, but, Mm. uh, you know, you still want to set healthy boundaries, but, um, you know, like seeing people as children, seeing yourself as a child, treating yourself like your own child. Mm. Self-love, yeah. yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Like a lot of times people, you know, they'll do things to themselves that they would never do to their own child. You know, they need to be harder on themselves. Yeah, yeah. We create our own problems in a way. We create our own issues. So. But, but definitely, it, it, like to awaken takes work it takes effort mm. you know it, it doesn't mean like you can just passively you know just you know spend like 30 minutes a week thinking about kind of these deeper ideas it's it's it takes it takes work and it takes ed- dedication um and and you have to you have to earn it like there's there's really no wisdom without some kind of sacrifice, whether it be a sacrifice of time, maybe, Mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, but yeah, just, just do the best you can. Mm. And would you say this is like very important work that people should prioritize instead of maybe tracking down the financial markets? (laughs) Like how important, how important is this work? Like, uh, from your point of view, would you, put it as the most important work that we should be devoting ourselves to or, you know. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know, financial, like the, the material world is also important and everything is all one and the material world must be respected, must be maintained, must also be kept healthy. Mm. But definitely, I mean, I see a lot of people, they, they don't spend any time on meditation, on learning, like quote unquote spiritual ideas. You know, there's a lot of people out there, they stay busy with work, family, children, like from the time they wake up to the time they go to bed with no Mm. time for silence, for example. Mm. You know, or, you know, a lot of people, they don't take the time to go through and look at their own thoughts and to consider like why why do I think this way? Why do I feel this way? Mm. You know, like um, w- we need more of that kind of self reflection and contemplation in the world. Mm. 
Yeah, okay. and, and silence. Yeah. Okay, nice. All right. Well, well, I think on that note, we'll end it there. And uh, really appreciate you coming on to the show, Shadra. Um, perhaps we can have you back again. Uh, I know we uh, could talk at length uh, about certain topics, um, but uh, maybe you could just mention what's in store for, for you and your music uh, in the foreseeable few days and weeks. What's on the cards? You got any new tracks coming out? Uh, I've seen you've been quite active with the music videos. Um, yeah, how is the scene in Taipei and that? Okay, uh, yeah, see, yeah, it's, it's uh, scene in Taipei is it's always great and interesting, and there are a lot of talented artists out there doing their thing. Um, uh, me personally, right now, I am creating a new kind of multi level art project, uh, the foundation of which is a book that I'm writing. Oh, wow. and big news. Yeah, yeah. And, and this book, it's, I mean, everything that we've talked about it's, it's, is in that book. Mm. You know, um, it's, it's more or less, it's kind of, it's, it's like if, if life was a book and this is my book report kind of thing. Okay. Oh. All right. Okay. Well, that, that's big. That's big. I, I look forward to, to, to doing that. Um, so, yeah, I, I, yeah, I've really uh, enjoyed enjoyed this talk. Yeah, I would definitely love to make this a regular thing. Yeah, we'll definitely so. have to get you back on and um, yeah, extract some of that that guidance and wisdom from you. It's uh, it's definitely some things people need to hear more. I think so, some of these topics. Anyway, we'll um, we'll stay in touch and maybe when you have some news on your multi level project and. Some samples or some some demos. We 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 can preview it here, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. That sounds great. This it's been my pleasure. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for for having me on. Yeah, it's it's our pleasure at the Music Nest. Uh, yeah, we, we're here to support the artists like yourself and uh, some of them, if visionary, also. <laughs> it's it's even a bonus. So, yeah, let's uh, nice, let's keep nice. the creativity and the music going and. Uh, yeah, until next time, Shadra. All right, sounds great. Sounds great. Until next time, peace and blessings to you and to everyone listening and everyone not listening. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. All right, peace and love, guys. Thank you for tuning in. So to take you guys out, we have a track called Oneness by Shadra. Now, it's one of his older tracks, yet I think it's a very powerful tune. So please enjoy. And if you did enjoy this podcast, I assume you did if you're listening to this at the very end, uh, please subscribe if you're listening on YouTube and uh, commenting or liking. We'd love to hear what you, your thoughts are. And uh, yeah, share the episode with some of your friends. So until the next time, from Louis Love, peace and love beats. Listen up humanity cause I'ma give you all I'm worth Then I'm worth a hundred stories of a how I let the earth And I'm talking about my soul, I drop my body like a shirt I drop the tab of medicine and let the spirit bitch and fall Spiritual or chemical, I see it with a miracle A master with a mineral, a crystalline, a spherical A drum, it's a Jericho mentality, a gene, great Phoenician Draconian, reptilian, a million, a serpent, an alien What is a homo sapien, what is an anophia Kill with messages from Sirius, a plane, though I'm serious The spirit is impervious, one with the multiversal Something in the nothingness of oneness Listen up humanity, cause I'ma give you all I'm worth Then I'm with a hundred stories of a how I let the earth Then I'm talking about my soul, I drop my body like a shirt I drop the tab of medicine and let the spirit bet you fall Listen up humanity, cause I'ma give you all I'm worth Then I'm with a hundred stories of a how I let the earth Then I'm talking about my soul, I drop my body like a shirt I drop the tab of medicine and let the spirit bet you fall Fungus, a messenger among us, who tongue is the gush, could count the worst. Yeah, I'm on a fire, ball of demons, spaceship, and my dreaming. Everything into existence, time, and it's persistent. So now, in the vision, we as you and I, everything gon' die. Just like you and I, everything is connected, just like you and I. Some of these people are affected with a
parasite They obsessed with flesh shit Man, the mother must have got lost myself Until I found the S-O-U-L You gotta go through hell For you reach higher ground If you don't bear a cross And you can't wear a crown I we lighting sound We in the still around We got propellers now We never come down Because we want now Because we want now Because we want Listen up humanity Cause I'ma give you all I'm worth Then I'm worth a hundred stories About how I let the earth Then I'm talking about my soul I drop my body like I should I tried to tap a medicine and let the spirit of bitch fall. Listen up, humanity, cause I'ma give you all I'm worth. Then I'm worth a hundred stories about how I let the earth. Then I'm talking about my soul and drop my body like I should. I'm trying to tap a medicine and let the spirit of bitch fall.